the meat and the rolls are provided, and all is asked that people bring a side dish. If you will, raise your hymnal and turn to page 694 and stand if you can. Let us sing our opening hymn, Come, ye faithful people, come. 694 in your hymnal as we stand.
We pray for our military, those who have served, those who are serving, because we have been blessed by their service. And Lord, we thank you for the family, Lord, and all that the family has to offer the body of Christ. May we continue to be discipled and raise uh, our children by example, Lord, how we should go in the ways of the Lord. And Heavenly Father, we lift up to you uh, those who are in the hospital, those who are at home recuperating or undergoing treatment, those who are in convalescent centers, rehabilitation centers, hospice, or in private care. And Lord, you know the needs of each and every one, and we lift them up to you, Lord, that those needs may be met. And Heavenly Father, there's much unspoken prayers, prayers that people have, and they want, Lord, to be lifted up to you. And we lift them up to you right now, as Lord, we mention them in our hearts. And Heavenly Father, we also thank you for our military, those who have served, those who are serving, because we have been truly blessed by their service. And we also thank you, Heavenly Father, for our pastor and his family, and pray for your hand to be upon them. And Lord, that you will continue to uh, bless them as we have been blessed by their service here. And Heavenly Father, we pray uh, most of all in thankfulness for who Jesus Christ is. And Lord, he paid our sin debt in full, the penalty thereof in full. And if there are those here, Lord, who don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior, I pray that you will prepare the message for them this morning, that they may find room in their heart and make room in their heart to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, so that they can understand what it means to be born again and live a new life in Christ Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this church in its many facets ministries, our children's ministry, our youth ministry, our adult ministry, because discipleship is important. And may our hearts, Lord, continue to yield to your word. And may your word be written in our hearts, Lord, that we do not deter from. And Lord, in your word, it teaches us many things. And one of the things it teaches us, Lord, is how to pray. When a disciple of Jesus came to him and said, Lord, how should we pray? And Jesus said to that disciple and to the others who were there, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
Each day we should strive to be more like you. And may we do so with everything that we have, because we know that all good things that come to us come through your hand. And thank you, Lord, for your giving to us and that we are allowed to give to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said, Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, the 23rd chapter. I'll be reading the 26th through the 43rd verses. And they led him away. As they led him away, they seized Simon of Cyrene who was on his way in from the country and put the cross on him and made him carry the cross behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who had mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore, the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say the mountains fall on us, and the hills cover us. For if men do this, if men do these things, when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be crucified. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. This is an odd selection for Christ the King Sunday for the last Sunday of the Christian year. Next week starts Advent, which doesn't always happen in November, but next week it'll be the first Sunday of Advent. And, and yet, we've been in Luke from the beginning. We've been working our way through the Gospel of Luke all this year. And I've mentioned on several Sundays you know, this is the last mess, the last encounter Jesus had in Jericho before um, Palm Sunday, before his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And I've mentioned the last two weeks that this was in the week between when Jesus entered Jerusalem and when he's crucified. And so it's fitting 
that we end at the crucifixion. We are here today. We celebrate this Thanksgiving Sunday because Jesus lived and died and rose again. Most of the time, we only deal with Jesus' crucifixion near Easter. This past year, we spent all of our Lenten season on the last words from the cross. And so, today we have two of those last words from the cross in this one passage. But it's the words before Jesus was crucified that we begin with. <coughs> Jesus turned to the women who were weeping. He said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore, the breasts that never nursed. Just about 40 years after Jesus spoke those words, Jerusalem was destroyed. Everyone who didn't get out, almost to a person was killed. Do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. like you've been in a city under siege. But the people of Jerusalem endured it. If they do this when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dark? Jesus may have been foreshadowing not the last days of Jerusalem, but the last days. We're right on the cusp of hitting eight billion people on earth. That is a lot of folk. And no one knows if there will come a point independent of, of Christ's return when our world will be able to sustain all the people on this planet. No one knows what lies ahead. But we can have confidence in Christ that He will be with us no matter what happens, no matter where things go, Christ will be with us to sustain us and to grant us peace that passes understanding. And then we come to the cross. Two men were crucified with Jesus, both criminals. Before Jesus says anything else, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they divide up his clothes by casting lots. Those two things in the same sentence. 
on the front of your bulletin this morning that has the King James quote, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Whether they do or they're doing, Jesus asks forgiveness from the very people who hung him on that cross. To the people who were standing around, to the leaders who mocked him, who hung the sign above his cross that said, this is the king of the Jews. In one of the other Gospels, it mentions that the Jewish leaders objected to that sign and asked Pilate to change it. But he would not. Such a contrast between the proclamation, this is the king of the Jews, Love a man who died for them and for us. Father, forgive them. I remember mean, what they do. They thought they knew what they were doing. They had crucified many, many people. It was the standard form of execution in Rome. It was designed to be a deterrent to keep people in occupied lands in line. so horrific, no one wanted to end up dying that way. The three men on this day hung upon a cross. Father, forgive them. For the women who were weeping, for the authorities that were crucifying Jesus and mocking him from soldiers that were both doing their job and mocking him as well. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Those words speak down through the ages. Jesus' forgiveness is still available. All we have to do is claim it. One thief mocked Jesus. If you're the Christ, save yourself and us. Just make it a, a blanket deal. Just get us out of this as well. We call that thief the unrepentant thief. But there was another thief.
not save me, not forgive me, <coughs> just remember me. Remember is one of the constant themes of the Old Testament. Remember the Lord your God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Over and over and over <coughs> in the Old Testament, we're commanded to remember, to remember, to remember. And that is our hope that we would remember Remember, that's what I need to do. Remember the Lord your God. Remember. He simply asked Jesus to remember. Remember me. Jesus never forgets. And I am confident that that thief who died that day with Jesus was with him in paradise. Over the years, some people have tried to make a point of saying that paradise was different than heaven. <laughs> to be with Jesus where he is, I'm good with that. Whether you call it paradise or heaven or anything else, remember me. Jesus remember. Being a Christian is not about reciting a set of words. Father, forgive me, dear Jesus, come into my heart is a common prayer that we offer to people who are wanting to accept Christ for the first time. But there's no litany that has to be spoken in order for us to open our hearts. We can say those words with a closed heart and have no connection between us and God happened that day. But we can simply say, remember me. Lord, help me. Save me. Forgive me. There is no prescription that we have to speak in order to be found in the presence of God here and in death. We open the connection in our hearts in this life that comes to full fruition in death.
God loved us so much that he gave his only son. It was hard for us in the choir not to say the words, God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. They, they turn it around in the song and it, we make it through. <laughs> um, but it was hard because it's not the words that we've learned over and over again for all our lifetimes. God loved us so much. But it doesn't matter the word order. It doesn't matter what we say. What matters is what's going on in our hearts. Have we opened our hearts to Christ? If we do, He will come in and abide with us and be with us to forgive us our sins. We may not have done anything worthy of being executed, but all of us are guilty of sin. Christ forgives if we but ask. Father, forgive me. something to be thankful for. We can all be thankful that Christ died for us. Lord, thank you so much for your love. Lord, we are not worthy.
Now may the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us all now and forevermore. Amen.